And an AI can do what humans will never be uh, able to do, and that is process large amounts of data very, very fast and help us try to predict and build reliable models around it and make instant decisions very, very quickly. You're listening to IBKR Podcasts. Find more conversations at ibkrpodcasts.com. Please remember any trading discussions are for information purposes only and are not intended to portray recommendations. Please listen to further disclosures at the end of today's episode. Now, welcome to our show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to IBKR Podcasts. I'm your host, Jeff Praisman, Interactive Brokers Senior Trading Education Specialist. It's my pleasure to welcome to the IBKR Podcast Studio, Shahir Rabin, CPO and co-founder of Capitalize AI. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Could you give your, our listeners a little bit of a brief background on yourself? Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you for ha having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure. So I'm um, Shachar. Uh, I'm, uh, first of all, I'm a proud father of two. Uh, my academic background is in engineering and uh, I'm a very enthusiastic day trader and the founder and chief product at Capitalize AI. The financial market has always been something that intrigued me. Uh, and ever since uh, university, I started investing on my own uh, in the markets. And, and that's what I've done in the past, uh, better part of the last 20 years uh, before I ventured out and, and started Capitalize AI. Well, I'm excited for upcoming discussion on AI and automated trading. You know, with all the recent news on AI, whether it's chat, GBT, the revamped Bing search engine from Microsoft and Google launching Bard. It seems overnight AI has become you know, a household word, but it's really been around for some form for a while and is playing a bigger and bigger role in so many areas. You know, but before we get to AI's role in trading, I kind of like to start with, in your, in your opinion, how has trading evolved, or I should say in your experience, how has trading evolved you know, over the past 30 years or so? Okay, so let's think about it for 30 years wasn't that long ago, but 30 years when an individual trader wanted to place a trade, you would have to pick up the phone, call a broker, tell him you want to buy this number of shares. Your price discovery was over the newspaper, so it was you know, at quickest uh, a day uh, of a delay. Uh, the floor traders were having a, a great advantage over you know, retail traders. They were all uh, uh, in on prices way before any individual traders. So if I don't look at the progress, I would look at four categories. It is analysis tools, price discovery, trading execution, and cost of trading. So if you look at analysis tools, if we were doing paper trading uh, on actual paper and we didn't have charts to play around with, Later in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had uh, great softwares, uh, software like Amy Broker, eSignal, uh, Sierra Charts, but those used to cost a lot of money. Uh, but as time moved on and, and progressed, we got cheaper and better uh, trading solutions like uh, MetaQuotes MT4, which was free, uh, and TradingView, which is mostly free, and a lot of uh, data traders can use that. So the technology and, and analysis tools were uh, advanced a lot. In terms of price discovery, today when I log into my uh, IBKR uh, uh, trading platform, I see the same prices as everyone else out there. So it's way more balanced and fair. Uh, trading execution is great. I have advanced trading uh, algorithms on my IBKR platform and, and on many other tools. Uh, and even the cost of trading today, you know, can trade as little as a dollar and even free trading uh, in many cases. So, and, and we can attribute all of that to the advantage of, of technology. So, you know, to summarize, we're in a great spot today where the retail trader have, you know, has powerful analysis tools for free, like, like never before. So, so really in, in all four areas, the, you know, the playing field has really been leveled to, to make it, you know, sort of the, the entry, cost of entry, the barrier for the retail investor, you know, much lower, much safer. You can make a, you know, a case that they have access to these research tools that they would have been unthought of years ago. Like you said, they're able to see real-time pricing uh, by clicking on their computer or their phone. Whereas in the past, you, you know, you'd have to pick up the newspaper and, and read the paper from the day before. So it really does sound like all in all, the retail investors in a, in a much better place than they were 30 years ago. And, to kind of go toward our subject with AI and automated trading and electronic trading, 
how can the combination of electronic and automatic automated uh, trading and AI help a portfolio? Um, so the straightforward answer would be that automatic trading can help us react instantly to market events and to hedge ourselves against uh, risks immediately once they present themselves. Uh, if I have an AI where I can you know, just tell it to close all my positions, if the market suddenly behave in an unexpected manner, that pretty much, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty much, you know, close that gap. An AI can look at multiple market conditions at the same time where you know, I, as a person, am quite limited. And it does that 24-7 as well. There is uh, a lot of data and, and and there's only so much that we as individuals can can look at and can react at, at, at once. But even before that, an AI can help us learn what constitutes as threat in the first place. If you can engage with an AI in your initial research, you can ultimately ask those questions that provide you that insight, the answers of, of what you should look for and what are the risks that you need to uh, hedge yourself against. So really, from it seems like AI can help you know, a portfolio from inception to the end and everywhere in between if used correctly. In other words, like you said, you can use it to generate ideas that would be good investing ideas for the scenario that you want to, you know, that you're predicting. It can manage your risk during the life cycle of the portfolio. And if need be, it can, you know, properly close out the portfolio as well. I mean, for an idea generation perspective, the most time consuming process when it comes uh, when it comes to your trading ideas is not the idea itself, but testing it and understanding if it's uh, valid. Um, we ultimately, there's limits, numbers of ideas we can explore uh, as we don't have the time to, to test them all. And, and with an AI, that is long, no longer a problem. So imagine you ask your AI, you know, if I, I were to buy Apple every time something specific happens and sell it when something else happens, you know, what kind of gains were I to expect? What kind of risks? Uh, what would be my drawdowns, and, et cetera? So suddenly time is no no longer a factor. The kind of day on this subject, what are some of the, the limitations though of AI? Like it can't be just a, you know, solves every problem in the world. You know, you get the magic portfolio. You know, what are some limitations when it's being used for investing? Is there a danger of like a herd mentality where everyone's getting the same answers or, you know, maybe relying it on too much as a crutch? We have to remember that ultimately an AI learns from history and data sets and, and build upon that. When something new happens, uh, it lacks the ability to invent a new uh, solution. Uh, it lacks imagination today, right? I don't know about the future. So in the short term, I would you know, use AI to assist me on my research and my trading, but I would still make sure that I'm vigilant and, and aware of what it does on my portfolio at all time, not giving it complete control. Uh, you mentioned her like behavior that used to be the case. Historically, we've seen that. I believe we'll see that again in the future. So once again, I would, uh, uh, I think AI is, is, is a prominent technology, um, but I would tread with caution for now. You know, AI, it, it used to be, it's become more and more common, that term. You know, I feel like five, 10 years ago, even though it was around, it was, it was almost more like a, a science fiction term, you know, AI, it's going to take over the universe. And now we're just seeing it in more and more areas of, of, you know, not just investing, but of everyday life. You know, I mentioned the search engines in the beginning of the, of the podcast that are, are using AI, and it, it seems like it's popping up everywhere. It, specifically, though, for investors, you know, how has the barrier of entry changed over the past, uh, let's say, few, you know, few years as far as you know, people that are able to use AI, like I'm kind of assuming it originally was maybe only available for big firms or maybe super wealthy individuals. What have you seen patterns as far as people that are utilizing AI or firms and, you know, over the, the last several years? So with big firms, uh, first of all, they use technology and AI for many years, right? Um, and they have the, the resources to put uh, uh, many engineers and, and, and a lot of technology into that. They use FPGAs, which means semiconductors and CPUs and put them uh, uh, in the exchanges themselves with uh, very smart algorithms that only get smarter. But those, um, uh, the big firms are fighting each other in a way in, in the, the fight for, for the penny. If I were to look at wealthy individuals, so many of those are baby boomers. And a lot of them are using uh, a lot of 
wealthy individuals use private banking uh, and investment managers to manage their investing. I don't think that this group is going to utilize uh, new technologies to better their position just because they're used to having their money managed for them. But a lot more is going on with the, the next generation, generation X and Y, who inherit those funds and who are much more inclined to use new technologies. And, and today is uh, easier than ever uh, to open a trading account at any broker, uh, to consume relevant content, uh, and to use a lot, utilize advanced trading technology. And th that group is doing that. We see that more and more. And that is the same for, you know, Main Street individuals. Uh, now more than ever, individual trader can use trading technologies no matter where they are in the world. All you need is a computer and a, and a fast internet connection. Although we haven't really discussed it here, you know, one thing that keeps coming up is, you know, chat GPT and open AI. For our audience, could you just kind of briefly describe what those are just so they can get a, you know, a kind of a frame of reference for th these tools that they're kind of hearing in the news and, you know, throughout sort of different areas of life right now? Sure. So chat GPT, open AI, those are conversational artificial intelligence, which means it's an, a it's an artificial intelligence you can converse with. You can ask them questions and they will go and, and find the answers for you. You need to be alert that they use real world data for their answers. They scrap the internet and we know that the internet, not everything that is out there is true and real. So we need to take that uh, in consideration, but you can converse with that uh, 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 chat through, um, through text-based uh, um, chat. Now, I've tried, obviously, uh, tried to take it to the next level. I've tried to ask ChatGPT to do something for me, you know, to remind me when something happens. And this is where you kind of find the barrier where, you know, you can ask him to write you a nice uh, poem, and it will very, very quickly and a very nice poem. But if you needed to manage something for you, that is not the technology. So... I would frame it as, as a conversational UI that uh, uh, you converse with artificial intelligence to, to get you know, answers regarding uh, a lot of different interesting things. And today, if you go to YouTube and you, and you search for uh, AI and writing code, you can actually find people using ChatGPT to write trading strategies code. So that is very interesting to see how people utilize that technology in that respect. I would overall, would you say that you know ChatGPT and OpenAI are a little overhyped right now, or do you, do you see them as a technology game changer down the road? I definitely see them as a technology game changers. We're just start, uh, getting started. Today, they are fresh new. Um, when they were first trained, they were using every available data on the internet to learn. Today, they already learned from us, from us interacting with them. But the, the, the power of, of AI, already today, you can, can write code. You can, they will uh, replace um, uh, a lot of uh, people uh, in their jobs. Today, if I start a website and I want a new content for my website and you know, several articles, I can, in a matter of minutes, have the AI write relevant, smart articles on any subject that I instruct it to do. So I don't need that you know, person doing that. Uh, it, can, it can write code and you know, in a year or two years time, it will be an amazing and sophisticated pieces of code. So I need less developers. And I see more and more uh, of the AI inception in every part of uh, our life move, moving forward. So I think definitely uh, a game changer, who knows where it's gonna be in a matter of a year or two. Uh, not to mention five years. I think uh, it's a lifetime in that respect. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I'm very interested to see where it's going to go. Uh, and especially in those places that I don't even have the power of, to predict. I'm excited to see what will come next. I kind of pivot back to investing again and specifically talk about your company, Capitalize AI, and how you use AI to help investors. Sure. So Capitalize AI is a research and ultimately a trading platform. And it provides the individual trader a very easy and simple way to interact uh, with the technology, with the trading technology using a natural uh, language uh, uh, interface. So with Capitalize AI, you can write any kind of um, scenarios you have on, on the markets and and then the platform will help you to 
ask the questions of what if, what if I were to invest in that way? It will help you to get notified when your scenarios apply on the markets. And ultimately, you can also automate your trading using those trading scenarios. Um, so it helps you with the decision making. It helps you remove emotional trading. It works 24-7. So ultimately, you will be able to manage your risk in a more responsible uh, manner. Where do you see the future of AI and investing? Do you see it as at some point, there'll be like no humans involved or it'll be a tool or it's going to go somewhere where we can't even imagine, you know, it, maybe let's say three years from now, five years, 10 years or, or you know, some sort of time frame. What do you think the possibilities are? That's kind of uh, the question when I get a, a, a loop in my mind, because I see that AI will be ultimately it will be trading. You know, it will do all our trading for us. But what happens when everybody will have smart AI tools, right? Nobody, we can't have everyone making money in the end. So I'm, I'm interested to see where it's going to go. Uh, I think the main benefits of AI use in the future revolve around the uh, development and validation of reliable models. So today when we need to take all this real-time data and process it, we have so much data and humans where, you know, we have limits. And an AI can do what humans will never be uh, able to do, and that is process a large amounts of data very, very fast and help us try to predict and build reliable models around it and make instant decisions very, very quickly. So that's the, the impact for, for the individual trader. But um, yeah, I'm keen to see how that would play out when everybody will have those tools. You know, who's going who's gonna to win? Who's going to make more money? We'll all make way more informed decisions, but uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. I'll kind of continue laying the playing field, it sounds like, as far as uh, the, the more people have access, right? The kind of the better off everyone is with that information. Uh, yes, exactly. And it just depends on how they're, they're able to use it and utilize it. Exactly, exactly. I think, uh, uh, you know, the technology is, has great power and, and it will be a matter of how you use that power use it smartly uh, or not. Thank you so much for um, joining us here at IBKR Podcast. Capitalized AI is available free of charge for interactive brokers clients. For more information, go to ibkr.com, go under the pricing header, and then research and news. Capitalized AI is also a webinar contributor. And to view previous webinars, as well as seeing upcoming live events, please go to our website under education. I also want to remind everyone that you can find all our podcasts on our website under education. Scroll down to IBKR Podcasts or on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Podbeam, Google Podcasts, and Audible. Thank you for listening. And until next time, I'm Jeff Praisman with Interactive Brokers. Thanks for listening to IBKR Podcasts. As always, we have more episodes at ibkrpodcasts.com. And if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education material, such as webinars at ibkrwebinars.com, financial and economic commentary at tradersinsight.news, market-related courses at tradersacademy.online, and quant-related articles at ibkrquant.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. The material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and is necessary, see professional advice.